So I've just done some Betfair trading. I've literally just come from the office down here to record a video on it because it resonated with me because this is a sort of trade that I do regularly. I don't do any research to do this particular trade. Um, it's very effective and I have covered it before, but it highlights a number of things, including why this type of trading is so effective. So let's explore that in this video. If you're interested in learning to use BetAngel, head on over to our website where you can download a free trial. If you're interested in learning how to use it, then head over to the BetAngel Academy where you can do exactly that. And if you want to talk to like-minded people, then head on over to our forum. So let's bring up a screenshot of this particular trade and explain how we ended up in this position. And the fundamental theory behind what I've done here is actually uh, pretty simple. And as you know, uh, this is a pre-off horse racing trade. And one of the reasons that I like these particular markets is because you can frame them beautifully and you can also uh, benefit from the fact uh, that these markets are driven by emotion and opinion. Now I say that, but of course, within this market, there are gonna be loads of people doing many different things. There could be people looking at form, trying to find value, they could be arbing, and they could be hedging positions that they've got somewhere else, all of those sort of things. And this is the great thing about the way that these markets work, is what you're seeing there is the conclusion of all of that activity. It's wrong to assume that when you have a position that you know um, that, you know, or a theory that that is definitely the way that it's all going to pan out because ultimately the market does whatever it wants and it's an amalgam of all of those guesses. So somebody that's using form to do something will come up with a different conclusion to somebody that's arbing. Um, it, when you look at a market, it's that mixture of all of those opinions. And that's what I say when I say it's driven by emotion and opinion because all the opinions, you know, what you need in a market and what you need to trade a market is a difference of opinion. You need everybody to think that they're right. And the funny thing about the way that markets work is everybody does believe that they're right. And this is why I like trading order flow because what you're doing is you're looking at everybody's guesses and then you're actually forming an opinion based upon what you see. But you're also digging a little bit deeper into the market. And the fact is that when the market moves in one direction or the other, that very often forces people's hands um, and people form opinions around what they feel is a good or bad price and if their position is in profit or it's heading for a loss that will force their hand as well and your role as a trader really is to participate in that market and effectively sort of um, benefit from that uncertainty you're effectively sort of um, buying and selling uncertainty at different prices. Uh, you know, when uncertainty is high, you're prepared to take on that risk. And when uncertainty is low and everybody feels they know what they're doing, then you're prepared to get rid of that risk effectively. And you're gonna profit from the difference of opinion between those two states of the market itself. And the fact is that I settled on trading order flow because it seemed the simplest approach to me. You've only got a few minutes in these markets. That's not en enough time for sort of any of the fundamentals to really come through. The market gets dominated by that short-term opinion. And of course, horse racing itself, it doesn't matter what form you choose. It's all about how the horse is behaving on the day. As they bring the horse out, they parade it and take it to the post. If it doesn't do what it's expected, then necessarily that will influence price. And that's what you see when you're looking in the market. So if we actually look at a graph from this particular race, um, hopefully this pattern will be familiar to you because I have covered it before. And I, I do mention this quite often on Twitter. I will often just go and it will basically indicate to you that the price has come all the way in and then it stopped and then it started to head back out again. And this is one of my favorite types of trade because it's sort of plays to many aspects of the market that are um, beneficial. And the fact is that, you know, if you're, if, if you're looking to get a horse at a good price, you know, if you back something at fives, it's a good price. If you back something at fours, it's not a bad price, but would you back it at threes? And you're sort of thinking, well, the shorter and shorter the price gets, the less likely it is that you're going to back. And the market at that point will begin to stall. Um, and then it's likely to head out in the other direction. And you'll note that I've used the word likely because it's impossible to know exactly what the market's going to do. And one of the things that you have to come to terms with when you trade in this manner is that neither do you. 
you can basically put yourself into a position where you've got the potential to profit, but you also have to accept that potentially the trade could go wrong. And I have covered this as well. So when you put yourself into that position and the trade quite clearly is not working out, then you start to exit that position as best you can. And sometimes that will involve taking a loss. And of course, the key factor when you're actively trading is that it's a balance of profits and losses and you're going to end out um, ahead over the longer term. But in order to get that consistency, you're going to have to have some uh, psychological uh, might in your mind because ultimately the market will play tricks on you. And when a position isn't going particularly well, you may exit too soon. Or when a position is going really well, you may not exit on the basis you think it's going to go further. So it's all about basically get, getting that balance right. So when I see the setup in the market, um, this is the sort of trade that I will do. And I hear you sort of saying, well, how often does it occur? Well, it occurs again and again and again and again and again and again. The thing is that this particular trade doesn't occur in every market. You have to wait for that opportunity to come along. It's less likely to occur in a competitive handicap race, but it's more likely to occur in sort of like a maiden or a lower quality race or a race where there's an, an, a, a short priced favorite, an uncompetitive race of some sort or another. And of course, a lot of markets will never exhibit this characteristic. So this is one of those trades that you will be on the lookout for. You'll be examining the market and you'll be trying to make a judgment on exactly how um, that is going to pan out. Um, so yeah, you know, the, the beauty of looking for uh, or trading order flow is that you can do it on a sort of broader basis uh, because what we're doing here is we're basically saying the price has gone far enough and it's going to go back in the other direction. And indeed, it can do the opposite. You could have one go up and then start to come down. But you're looking at the positions in the market that people are no longer willing to back or lay. And that could be driven by a whole number of factors. It could be form students trying to get value. It could be people hedging. It could be people early on um, that are trading and are looking to get out. But these key points exist within the market and they are persistent over a long period of time. In fact, you know, I've seen these sort of trades available for as long as I can remember within the market. And obviously that is a long time. But the great thing about trading in this way is the patterns repeat not only within individual markets, but across geographies as well. So I'm happy to trade uh, the French racing when it's the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. I'm happy to trade um, the World Cup in Dubai. Um, I traded the Saudi Cup uh, fairly recently, although it's not a high liquidity race, but also the Breeders' Cup, um, the Melbourne Cup. When you trade in this manner, you don't have to look at form. You don't have to dig deep into the market and really overthink the whole scenario. And I often think that overthinking can be a massive problem when you're actively trading. You want to have a simple setup. You want to wait for that setup to occur and then you have to jump on it. But of course, when you first do that, you'll probably see it too late and the market will have moved. So this is one of the reasons that people find this sort of trading a little bit tricky is that initially you're going to see that move occur after it's happened. And really what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to practice it so that initially you'll be behind the curve and you may actually end up losing money when you first start trading in this manner. You want to get to the situation where at least um, you're seeing it as it happens. And then as you get better and better, you'll be able to see it before it happens. And sometimes I will often tweet out and indicate to people um, that something is about to happen. But on this particular occasion, I could see what was about to happen and I captured a chart of it at that particular point. And you can see very clearly that the market flatlined at this point. It was near a crossover point. Um, the market had come a long way. There was another runner actually um, that looked like it was about to start heading in and all of these sort of factors come together. Now I have done a video explaining this type of trade before, but the point of this video was to show you that this sort of trade does occur on a regular basis. It will occur again, probably tomorrow or definitely this week. Um, and I will see it in other markets as well. And this is one of the benefits of trading order flow is that um, it's transplantable through markets because what you're trading really isn't uh, any, any factor of the underlying market it's itself. What you're trading is that emotion and opinion before that particular event starts. And what you're going to be doing is looking for clues within the market as to why that's the case and trying to stack that in your favor. So by looking at the ladders, trying to understand where the orders are going and whether the backing is slowing down or speeding up or whether the laying is slowing down or speeding up, looking at those key points within the market on this particular occasion near a crossover helps you tip that trade in your favor because you will get losing trades in future and going into the market at this exact point will help you get your total expectancy right over the long term. All of these things sort of stack 
together. Um, and that's why I find these sort of trades particularly appealing. But having just one uh, done one today, just a few seconds ago, I thought, well, this is worth talking through again, just to reinforce some of the points that I've made in the past, some of the videos that I've covered, but also to show you that this is a regular repeating pattern. And if you sit there and look at the markets and wait for it, then I'm pretty sure that you will see it too.